Hello, good people. It's Rob Lee. I'm going to do a video for you this evening about the world. But before we get into that, I want to give you the name of the new website. It's not done yet. Brother Lyman sent me a, a email last night and said he's ready to get on it. It's called flockofjesus.com. And I don't know how long it'll take Brother Lyman to do it, but I don't think it'll be very long. And we'll just keep adding on to it as we go. I want to do a video for you about the world and what this world is, what the world has become, what it's really always been, and what does the Bible really say about the world? What does Almighty God say about the world? What does Jesus say about the world? And that is the Bible. What's, what does the Bible really say about the world? Now, when you use the word world, the word world has a couple different meanings. For example, the world doesn't always mean everybody. It may mean people. It may mean a certain people. And sometimes it may mean the entire earth. It does not refer to a mountain. It does not refer to an animal. When you're talking about the world, you're talking about the people and the system, because that's what it is, because the Father created this earth. And people say that the Father created the world. The Father created everything. But the Father also tells us some things that he did not plant. Uh, a couple of days ago, I had prayer, and I was talking to Father, and I wasn't feeling great. And I told Father that if my Father gave me every desire that I've ever wanted in my life, and I've asked him for quite a bit. If, for example, I used to I used to fantasize about living in a castle in ancient Bavaria, Germany, off the 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 coast of Ireland or in Scotland. I used to fantasize about that. If my father gave me that and told me that I can live to be a thousand, but if he told me after he gave me that that you can't have me, you can't have Jesus, how could it ever be worth it? It just it would it would be meaningless, and that's what this video is. I mean, it would just be meaningless. And you ever wonder why there's you and so many people why you dislike the world and people think that you're suicidal, or that you're you're going against the system. And come on, man, you're not going along. It's one thing to find joy in the world. You find joy in things that you enjoy, and not all things are lustful and nasty simply because they make you smile. Sometimes we enjoy things. Men and women, they have things that they enjoy, but some things are prideful and they are lustful and they go against the Father, they go against Jesus. To be able to really to navigate this world, especially as you get older and you realize time is short, and many people start to realize this early in their life. They don't have to get to their 40s or 50s or 60s. Some people realize it in their 20s and in their 30s, they start to realize that time is precious, time is short, and you have to make the most of it. To be able to navigate this world, and I mean to really navigate this world, as if you would a ship. You really do need tools, and there's something that you need above all, because if not, if you don't navigate this world and do it the way you're supposed to, you're going to fail, and you're going to be trapped in what I call the Babylonian maze, and you will just be trapped in it forever. And what will happen is that you will, you will end up becoming a slave to the, to the Babylonian beast system. And many people believe that the beast is some figure who's going to sit up on some throne when I've tried to tell you that the Antichrist are billions of people. It's a one world system. Well, most folks just they can't comprehend that because they need it to be exotic. They want it to be more than it is because it moves them. Not Jesus moves them, but going into prophecy and making it up as they go, that's what moves them. The truth is, <clears throat> everything that's been put in motion, you're not going to change. None of us are. It's God's will. It's going to happen. There ain't a damn thing that you can do about it. It's a mighty river that's rolling. All you can do is hold on and go along with the ride. There's no need to try to swim upstream. There's no need to try to swim to the shore. You do what God told you. God told you this. it's a mighty river. It's flowing. It's going to get faster. Hold on to Jesus, and that's all you need because this is a bad world. It's a bad system. So what we're going to do now, we're going to read some verses, and we're going to look at the key, the real key, of how you have to get through this world and there's only one key or else you'll be a slave forever the key is Jesus and I, I'm not talking about any any anybody can say the name Jesus the Bible tells us that the devils know who Jesus is the Bible tells us that the devils believe they know who Jesus is because you can utter the word Jesus five letters does not mean that you love Jesus does not mean that you have a relationship with Jesus Jesus Christ is a way of life it's, it's, it's 24 hours a day, seven days a week until you die, and, and, and then some. So what I want us to do, I want us to look, as time, time grows shorter, I want us to look at some scriptures from the Bible, and I want you to think about 
what's really being said about the world because most folks just don't read the Bible. We've already talked about this. So let's read what the Bible really says about this world. 1 Timothy 6, 7. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. You see, the mind is against God. The flesh is against God. It's the spirit that, that is with your father. James 4, 4, ye adulterers and ye adulteresses, know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity. And the word enmity means hatred. It says that the friendship of this world is hatred with God. Whoso though, whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. And it doesn't mean that you're that you're against God's beautiful creation, that you're against a, a newborn baby is beautiful. Seeing a cat meow, or seeing a mountain, a river, a stream, it's talking about the system. It's an evil system. Matthew, <clears throat> pardon me, Matthew 16, 26, the words of Jesus Christ. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Luke 9.25, the words of Jesus again, and it says it just a little bit differently. What is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And I just got through doing a video eight days ago, seven days ago, about the lie and the truth. Most folks, they walk in, in the lie, which is the darkness. The problem is that most folks don't know it. John 8, 23, and he said unto them, this is Jesus talking to the children of the devil, the Pharisees, Jesus, and he said unto them, ye are from beneath, I am from above, ye are of this world, I am not of this world. John 12, 25, he that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Now is the judgment of this world, now shall the prince of this world be cast out. That's John 12, 31 and it calls the devil he calls him the prince of this world the prince he's not god he's not he's, he, he's not a king jesus is, is the only king he's the prince of the, the system of of this world john 12 46 i am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness john 14 27 peace i leave with you my peace i give unto you not as the world giveth Give I unto you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And Jesus is talking about the world can't give you real peace. People think that it can. They think money, Prozac, they think that certain things can give them peace. The real peace comes from Jesus Christ. A real relationship with Jesus Christ. John 15, 18, if the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. And many of you know that it feels like the world is against you. The world hates you. Most of you, it's the truth. The world does hate you. It hates you because you are of Jesus Christ, and it hated him first. John 15, 19, If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. John 16, 33, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. John 17, 9, I pray for them. I pray not for the world. So Jesus says he prays for his own. He doesn't pray for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. So Jesus is saying, I'm praying for the ones that the Father has given me. John 17, 15, now this will destroy the people who believe in this rapture nonsense. Although, quite frankly, it ain't going to make no difference because as I speak, there's somebody making 10 videos teaching some false doctrine called the rapture. John seventeen fifteen. I pray not that thou should should shouldest take take them out of the world, but that thou shalt keep them from evil. So Jesus is saying to the Father about his own children, I don't want you to take them out of the world, as the people about the rapture teach. I want you to keep them from evil. John eighteen thirty six. Jesus answered, and this is when Jesus was talking to Pontius Pilate, and this is very powerful. Pontius Pilate wanted to save Jesus. He was afraid of Jesus. Now Pontius Pilate has been. Uh, over the years, he's been credited with killing Jesus. That's a lie from hell. That's a lie from hell. Pontius Pilate tried to save him on four different occasions. That's not who killed Jesus. So let's look at this exchange from Jesus and Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate asked him, what is truth? And now look what's being said in 36 and 37. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. 
If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. 37. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Every one that is of the truth heareth my voice. Heareth his voice. Romans 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of this world. And what these two verses are talking about is that when you, are, when you make yourself a part of this world, you are, you are a slave to, to this world. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Now, this is incredibly powerful. Now, I've taught you all about fallen spirits, fallen devils. They, they call them fallen angels. They're actually just demons that were cast out. They're here for a purpose. But we know Jesus Christ is our judge. But will we help him judge? Absolutely. Let's read what the Bible says. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, number 1. Dare any of you having a matter against another go to the law before the unjust and not not before the saints now what jesus is saying here is that if you have a problem with your brother why would you go to the law you would want to take it up with your brother or the other trusted members of, of your family the family of jesus first two do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world and if the world shall be judged by you are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters Number three, know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? And what Paul's trying to say, if you can't judge the small matters, how can God trust you to judge the big matters? First John 2.15, and then we're going to get ready to close, brother. Number 15, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Again, it's talking about the system. If you love the system, you can't love Almighty God. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. First John. First John 4, 4 through 5. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak of the world, and the world heareth them. These are the YouTubers, the preachers, the, the athletes, all these, all these people who are constantly on TV. The world hears them because they are of the world, and we just got through hearing what is the world. It's anti the Father. It's anti Jesus. We are not of that. First John 4.14, And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. First John 5, 4, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. First John 5, 19, And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. Now let's close. First John 4, 9, In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. So, how do we live? We live through Jesus. That's how we live. And John 17, 23 tells us that we are one. Jesus is, is saying it right here in John 17, 23. He says, I in them and thou in me. He's talking to his father. He says that they are in me and I'm in you that they may be perfect that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and, and has loved them as thou hast loved me, because we are one family, one, and the Almighty Father lives inside of you, Jesus Christ lives inside of you. That's enough, brother, I hope, uh, brother and sisters, I hope that you have enjoyed it, and please save the website flockofjesus.com, and it'll be done as soon as the Father wills that it is done. May the Almighty Father bless each and every one of you, and that you remember that this world is not not for you it's not of you you do have to live in it you have to work in it you have to drive in it sleep in it but you do not have to be a part of it you only have to be a part of it and what you have to do you don't have to go out of your way to be a part of the world because it's not of your father and what what you need in this life your father will see that you have it what you need you will have it you may not have an abundance but you will have what you need because the father does not break his word the world breaks its word but Almighty God does not. May the Father bless each and every one of you in the name, the only name that you need, the only one that you need, the only way, the only life is Jesus. That's it. Amen.